Thanks for joining us once again as we talk NFL Draft 2024 on Prime Sports Network. And we're going to talk about the Tennessee Titans. And for the very first time here on the uh, channel, we're going to introduce a new Titans insider, Tyler Roland, who is the host of the Locked On Titans podcast. And uh, Tyler, thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I love talking football, love talking Titans. So uh, a pleasure to come on and, and break down the team. Yes, and we are, I tell you what, before we do that, uh, since you're a new insider, I got to ask you a little bit about your background. How long have you been following the team? Uh, 25 years now. Ooh, so since wow. uh, since the Music City Miracle season, the first year that the Titans were officially the Tennessee Titans, I have been on board through uh, a lot of bad, but some good as well. That's a long time. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, are, are you located in the area? No, I'm actually from Ohio, which it's kind of funny because there is a large set of people my age from my area that are big Tennessee Titans fans. The Eddie George connection, uh, him going from Ohio State to the Tennessee Titans made an easy bridge for me to be like, hey, I like this guy in college. Now he's on this team. The new jerseys, the new team, the Music City Miracle, making the Super Bowl run. As a nine-year-old kid, it just captivated me, and me and my brother made a made a decision long ago that this is the team we're riding with. Maybe not the best choice I ever made in my life, but uh, I, I say that tongue-in-cheek because it's worked out very well, and I've turned that fandom into a career. So uh, very, very proud of my Tennessee Titans fandom, and yes, it's it's been a long 25 years. <laughs> And they came oh so close that year. Yep. One so, yard short, of yeah. course. Uh, all right. So uh, first of all, draft capital. How is it uh, going into this draft? Uh, the Titans are in an okay spot with draft capital. They have seven picks. Now, they do have two in the seventh round and none in the third round because they traded up for Will Levis last year and gave up their third round pick. So I'd like to see them at some point during the draft maybe make a move back and, and add an extra top 100 pick into the mix. But they aren't in a terrible place in terms of overall capital. All right. And, of course, uh, you can check out as we are, uh, look, of course, posted here on the site, the rleds.com depth chart for Tennessee. We'll have a link in mm -hmm. the description for the depth chart. We're also going to have a link in the description so you can check out the Locked On Titans podcast and uh, also uh, your Tic Tac Titans Twitter handle. So where did that <laughs> come from? That was uh, just so – um, I, I have a big emphasis on, uh, film. I do a lot of film work. I also have the Tic Tac Titans YouTube channel where I do my film work exclusively over there. But my idea is, uh, I'm a big guy who like, uh, or I'm not a big guy. Let's just say that I'm, I'm a short guy, but, uh, I, I'm a guy who is big on alliteration. So I love that Tic Tac Titans, the T T T. I love stuff like that first and foremost in my English journalism background. Uh, but also it's focusing on the X's and O's. And where do you find X's and O's? In Tic-Tac-Toe. So Tic-Tac-Titans is a play on that. I focus on the X's and O's of the Tennessee Titans. So it's corny, it's cheesy, but, oh. you know, I am corny and cheesy and I love it. So uh, <laughs> very happy that I found that name and, and it stuck really yeah. well. And I think it was the right choice. I, I agree. Absolutely. Okay, so let's go ahead and, first of all, start on offense mm -hmm. uh, because we have to talk about the changes on offense. you got the new head coach, Brian Callahan. He brings mm -hmm. in the best offensive line coach in the league in Bill Callahan. And that's a huge – I mean, if, if any offensive line in the league needed not just an upgraded offensive line coach, but maybe the best right. offensive line coach we've seen in a long time, it was Tennessee. Yeah, 100%. That was necessary because it's not only a talent issue, it was a coaching issue. They had uh, an okay offensive line coach and Keith, Keith Carter for most of the Mike Vrabel era. He went to the New York Jets for the 2023 season, and the Titans made a terrible decision and promoted his assistant, Jason Hawtowling, who was simply not ready for the job, and, and they really regressed. So the talent wasn't there, but the coaching wasn't there either, and, and they fixed the coaching part of it. Now they need to fix that talent part, and of course that leads us to the NFL draft. Yes. And it looks like there is a, even though, he, and here's another thing that's important to note, of course, is that Carthon, the general manager. So this will only be his second draft, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. It will be, but you could even call it his first draft, honestly, because the reality is last year, Mike Vrabel had more say than oh, Rand Carthon. Okay. And there's some conversation within the community that Rand Carthon wanted to take Zay Flowers at number 11, and Mike Vrabel overruled for Peter Skaronsky. So this is, in my mind, this is truly the first real draft 
for Rand Carthon where he gets to make his own decisions at every step. Okay. And, uh, and I, and I I wanted to note that because there are several players, of course, we'll see in here that were drafted 21, 22. Mm -hmm. These are not Rand Carthon players. So nope. uh, that's why it'll be interesting to see exactly how uh, they handle these guys. So mm -hmm. let's start on the offensive line. And and one of them is, is penciled in right now at left tackle. We know he's not uh, going to be the starting left tackle. If the Titans can uh, do anything about that, uh, that's <laughs> right. a petite free air. Uh, you also have Dylan uh, Radons, and I have to ask you about Dylan because um, statistically it looked like he had a better year last year, but mm -hmm. you said on our other video that you believe that the team needs not just one but two offensive tackles in the draft. They did trade for Watson. That's just, I'm sure, a depth right. piece. But So now they've got potentially four depth pieces, maybe five, but you're saying they don't have two starting caliber tackles. No, no, I don't think so. And look, Dylan Raidens is a guy who I was a big supporter of when he was drafted. I think that he got jerked around and mistreated and miscoached by Mike Vrabel and his coaching staff. I think he'd be a, a better player right now with better coaching and, and a, a better plan on offense. I think Raidens ultimately is a guard, though. And the Titans coaching staff has talked about maybe giving him first crack at right guard. That's where he'll kind of start in training camp and in practice. Uh, I think for right now, for depth chart purposes, if the Titans played a game right now, yeah, Dylan Raidens would have to play right tackle. And he did at the end of last season. He was an offensive tackle in college. But I just think um, in space, he's going to struggle with the speed of edge rushers, getting him inside. And he really showed an improved strength last year coming back from an ACL tear uh, in his second season. So I think that, I think ultimately Dylan Radens could push to start at right guard if the Titans add better talent at offensive tackle in the draft or in later free agency with some of the veterans still out there, like a Makai Becton and Andrews P. You know, there, there are names out there that could come in uh, during the summer and take that right tackle spot. But uh, I, I think Raidens ultimately could slide in and be that starting right guard. Daniel Brunskill would save them $2 million if they were to cut him. And Daniel Brunskill is a good player, but he just wears down and gets injuries late in the year. And he was in and out of the lineup at the end of the year for performance and for injury. So I think a young guy like Raidens with his strength may be a better fit there at that right guard spot going into okay. the season. But for right now, I mean, if they again, if they played a game today, Raidens would have to be their right tackle. Well, the the really cool thing is is that like you were saying that maybe with better coaching, this and that. Well, mm -hmm. Callahan's there now, so yeah. maybe he is exactly what Radens needs to turn his career around as a right tackle, or who knows? Like you said, maybe as a right guard. But either way, either way, he'll he'll start more than, is what you're saying. Whether it's going to be at right guard or right tackle. Well, I, I don't think that it's, you know, confirmed that he's sure. going to be a starter. I believe that he has that ability, but okay. I definitely think he's going to be able to compete for a starting spot, especially on the interior at that right guard spot. Right tackle, I'm, I, you know, with the different coaching staff, Rand Carthon said they had to throw out their draft plan with Mike Vrabel because this coaching staff wants such a different thing. Uh, at all these different positions. So it'll make it interesting to see how some of these guys develop, where they get used ultimately, and how the new coaching staff use them. There's a lot of unknown there, but I do believe that Dylan Radens has the potential to be a starter, starting offensive lineman in the NFL. I just think it's more likely to be right guard than right okay. tackle long term. And look, bottom line is, is it's going to be very hard to find two starting caliber tackles in one draft. Most likely. Just, yeah, it does not happen very often. Uh, even though it could happen. I mean, just take a look at Cleveland last year when they drafted yeah. an offensive tackle. What, third round, I believe, Jones went? Uh, he, he turned Jones, out pretty I think well. That was, that was, I, Seattle did pretty good a couple of years ago when they had That's Charles right. Cross at left yeah. tackle, and I'm, I'm blanking on the right tackle's name, but they got two decent starting tackles in one draft. Again, with Bill Callahan... You know, the, the saying is all things are possible through Jesus Christ. I say all things are possible through Bill Callahan. So I'm there not ruling go. anything out right now. All right. Now they did go out and, of course, spend big money on Christian Berry. You mentioned Skaronsky. Mm -hmm. So they do have a, yes. a few spots that are, that are, that are good. They're, they're, they're in place. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see what kind of uh, additions they have through the draft. And, of course, um, we know they're going to get at least one. If you had to pick one based on the mock drafts you've done, also based on the style of play that you think this team is going to play under Callahan, is there a particular tackle that you've been zeroing in on? 
You know, Greg, I got to tell you, those two things, who I think is the best tackle, and then style of play is where it gets interesting. So for me, I think the best tackle is Joe Alt. I, I, I call myself yep. the leader of the Alt cult. Uh, on Tennessee Titans Twitter because I think that all is just a plug and he may not have the high end potential of some of the other tackles that could get drafted high, but he is just a consistent plug and play eight to 10 years. You're starting left tackle. And I think that the Titans need to go safe with what they've gone through at left tackle the last few years. So Joe Alt is my number one option for the Titans. But of course you have Olu Fashionu, who probably has more high-end upside, isn't as good in the run game, isn't as technically sound, but has just more raw talent. Um, maybe Bill Callahan would be drawn to that because he can get the best out of him, and that would make him more of an option than Joe Alt. J.C. Latham from Alabama, who didn't do any athletic testing, and that makes you worried at his size, but he is just raw power personified. And if the Titans are going for more of a power offensive line than the agile offensive line they had in the zone scheme under Arthur Smith and Mike Vrabel, then I think J.C. Latham could be a more appealing option. So I think there are a lot of good options at the top of the draft for the Titans. But for me, I would take Joe Alt and lock the key and throw it away and say we're good at offensive uh, at left tackle for the next eight years. Yeah, I agree with you. The question is going to be, though, whether he'll be there. Um, yeah, and that is going to be probably up to, you would think, well, it could be up to the Chargers and it could be up to yeah. the Giants. Um, so we'll find out, but either way, they're going to get a top, uh, left tackle, no question mm -hmm. with their pick. Do you think statistically speaking that, and again, we don't know Carthon doesn't have a long history of drafts, but would you say, and you'd mentioned they don't have a third that you, you believe, especially because they have that need to tackle that they're going to stick they're going to definitely stay where they're at or, Give me the contingencies, the, bet, the, the the scenarios that you would think, well, this is why you, you can see them trading down a little bit further. They'll still be able mm -hmm. to grab a quality offensive tackle, and they can recoup some additional draft capital. What do you think would have to happen in order for them to swing a deal like that? Well, let me just say this first and foremost, Greg. I do not agree if they make this move. I, I think the contingent is if Joe Alt and Malik Neighbors are off the board. I think if the Titans are sitting there at seven and all in neighbors are off the board, let's say it goes three quarterbacks first, then you go Marvin Harrison Jr., you go Malik Neighbors, and then you go Joe All or Joe All and then Malik Neighbors. I think the smart move would be pick Roma Dunze, who I think is an elite prospect as well. And I think you take the elite prospect when you're picking that high in the draft. But I don't know that Roma Dunze would be as good of a fit for the Tennessee Titans. Okay. And I don't know that they would look at him, you know, because he's more of an outside receiver. The Titans would need more of a slot wide receiver right now to pair with the two veterans they have on the outside. So I think in that scenario, the Titans would consider a trade down because again, Olu Fashionu, Talise Fuanga, um, J.C. Latham, there are offensive tackles that you could get it. Let's say, you know, if only three quarterbacks are off the board, then that means that J.J. McCarthy or Drake May is available and you could get Minnesota, Denver, Vegas to maybe yes. move up and make that move. And then you're only dropping back to 11, 12, 13. And while some say pick up an extra third, I'm sorry, but if you look at recent draft trades like the Buffalo Bills going from 12 up to six for Josh Allen and some of the moves we've seen in recent years, there is no way I am moving back for just a third round pick. I'm wanting a, a second round pick and a third round pick, a future first round pick and a third round pick, something like that. It would have to be more lucrative for me than just a third round pick in general. But I do think that if neighbors and all are off the board, the Titans would absolutely consider a move from seven to the early teens and they would recoup some draft pick and still be able to get a top tier offensive tackle talent. So I do think that that would be heavily in play, even if I don't necessarily agree with it and would want them to take a dune set. Okay. A question then, uh, cause is what, cause you say what you believe. So from, from mm -hmm. the research that you've done from everything you're hearing from Tennessee and, and, and your gut, do you believe what, what you're saying based on, cause again, some people, some some viewers might be going, wait a second, they got Burks at, at slot. Because we didn't talk much, but we talked about a little bit about it in the other video. They got Burks at slot, first round draft pick. Why do they need another slot guy? But what you're trying to say here, though, is, is that not only do you believe that, but you believe they believe that. You, you don't think they're very confident in Burks. 100%. And recently we heard from the coaching staff and... Brian Callahan, Titans new head coach, even said we need someone to emerge 
in the slot position. And he didn't even mention Traylon Burks. He mentioned Kyle Phillips and Mason Kinsey and Nick Westbrook Akine. Even though Traylon Burks played 70%, 77% of his snaps in college in the slot. So I don't think they see Traylon Burks as a slot receiver in this offense, which wow. I, I mean, I, I'm surprised by that as well. But the other reality here is Traylon Burks has done nothing to to inspire hope that he can be a first round receiver. We can say that all we want, but you know, just because he was drafted in the first round doesn't mean that he's a first round caliber player. And yep. he's had a ton of injuries throughout his first two years. He's a guy who doesn't really know the playbook very well. He's been out of shape at different times during his career with the Titans. So he just doesn't seem like someone who is fully committed and focused on being the best football player he can be. And with him not being a draft pick of Rand Carthon and him not being someone that this coaching staff is committed to in any way, I, I personally think the Titans would be better off to trade Traylon Burks for a day three draft pick and just cut their losses and move on. I have said all off season, you cannot factor Traylon Burks into roster decisions. He's given you nothing. So wow. I think it would okay. be wise for the Titans to ignore his existence. And if you get something out of him, then great, but I'm not counting on him for anything, and I can't pencil him in as a starter for this football team right now. Interesting. That's great uh, because I know there's a lot, and, and I'm sure we did the same exact thing on our mock draft shows, and I'm sure there's mock, mm -hmm. tons of mock draft shows outside of Tennessee who probably just look at that depth chart and go, well, they don't need a receiver in the first round. Right. So, um, like I said, and no, not joking aside, but this is why it's great to have uh, insiders like you on and um, – uh, this is the kind of information we're looking for. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, speaking of offensive line, before we move out of this, and I was talking about um, uh, Dewan Jones. Hey, mm -hmm. Dewan Jones was drafted in the fourth round last year, so yep. and became a starter. Bottom, and I know there were injuries, he played but well. he looked good. So yeah, he played well. That's, so what that's saying is, is yeah, maybe if any, if any team with any coach can can if they use a first rounder of course on a tackle and then use another mm -hmm. pick on a tackle in the third or fourth round yeah why can't the titans have two new offensive tackles even though if they're rookies in 2024 i could definitely see that happening and maybe the guy that fits dewan jones the most and it'll be interesting to see where he goes is the kid mims the other yeah. big mammoth tackle from georgia so that could be very interesting they might look at exactly how uh how he was able to mold dewan jones into a mm -hmm. really good player and now you get another power five big time program tackle like mims be interesting to see exactly where he goes you would think he's still a first round draft pick because of the size potential there's no way he gets out of the first round but um you know, again, we have we've only seen one draft of Rand Carthon. Did he make any trades last year during the draft, either to go up or down? Yeah, they did move up in the second round to go get Will Levis. So they the third okay. round pick that they don't have right now, they traded up from their spot in the second round, moved up to get Will Levis. Um, so I think that was a smart move. Uh, yep. The Titans would be in a bad spot right now if they hadn't done that. You know, because Tannehill really fell off the map. So they did make a trade up, but with the situation that they're in right now and with having a new coaching staff, they're going to want to turn over the roster a lot. And a lot of the guys at the back end of the roster for Mike Vrabel and his staff are not going to be fits, and they're going to want to get their own young guys in to develop them. So I think the Titans want to have as many picks as they possibly can, even if they're later picks, just to get new blood, new life into the roster that fits better with the new coaching staff. So I think the Titans are really a candidate to trade down. I've said I don't want to trade down at number seven in the first round because I want to take a blue chip prospect and make the losing worth it. Get one of those top tier prospects like I was talking about with Roma Dunze. Just take him. Don't yes. trade down. Just take him. Uh, but a trade down in the second round, if they can go from 38 to 45 to 55, somewhere in there, then you pick up a late you know, third round pick in the 80s or the 90s, get another top 100. I, I think that would be a great move for the Titans to do. So I think rather than trade up, I think a trade down would make a lot of sense. And like you said with Mims, just to touch on that, this is one of the best offensive tackle classes we yes. have seen in recent memory. So if yes. there's ever a year, to like a guy like Javon Foster from Missouri with 2,700 snaps at left tackle in his college career, he's probably going to be available in the fourth round. Like yeah. I, I just think there are a lot of good options on day one and day two to add to the offensive tackle class. Who do you think uh, has a really good chance? Who would you give the best chance on the line as far as the young kids? All of them, because now with Callahan there, it's a clean slate. Uh, mm -hmm. Who do you give the best chance, including Duncan? Who do you have the best chance that you might be able to see them actually turn out to be better than they look right now? 
You know, honestly, I'm going to go with Leroy Watson, the guy they just traded for. He was an undrafted free agent in 2022, was on practice squads, got picked up by Cleveland late in the year last year when they had all their struggles. And he came in and he performed better than their their offensive tackle, Jerron Christian. Um, so Leroy Watson is a converted tight end. He was a tight end in college who converted to offensive line at the NFL level. Great athlete. And Bill Callahan worked with him last year in Cleveland. Ran Carthon brought him into San Francisco's organization as an undrafted free agent the year before. So there's a deep connection there between the GM and the new offensive line coach with Watson. And I think being a converted tight end from college, he's got a lot more potential than he's shown so far. I personally don't think that that Scarron or that Petit Ferrer or Jalen Duncan fit the mold of what the new coaching staff is looking for. I would look for one of those guys to ultimately be cut at the end of the day, because you can't keep 11 offensive linemen on your 53. No. You just can't do that. No. So I think Leroy Watson, they wouldn't go out and give up a seventh-round pick for the guy if, if Bill Callahan wasn't behind the scenes saying, hey, go get this guy. Sure. Go get this guy who I worked with. I can make him better. So I'm going to go with Leroy Watson, and I think if there's anybody on this depth chart right now who could turn into a starter that wasn't expected and do a good job, I think Leroy Watson at right tackle could ultimately be a, a starter for the Titans. It may not be the most ideal scenario, but I'm not always right, Greg. I'm not always really? right. And if and if I am wrong, I think that Leroy Watson could ultimately be a starter for the Titans this year. Um, even if it would still be a spot you want to upgrade, I think he could be better and surprise people based on just the faith that Bill Callahan and Rand Carthon have shown, giving up a seventh-round pick to trade for him. That tells me a lot. It does. Okay, good points there. Uh, let's talk about the rest of that offense and tight end. So they... Uh, Pre Carthon used up their pick in 2022. Wiley comes uh, from Carthon last year, so they got a couple of young tight ends. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think they're 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 happy with both? Are they in a good situation with both? I think that they're in a decent situation. Josh Wiley's put on some weight this year. He needs to be stronger to be more of an inline tight end, a Y tight end with his hand in the dirt next to the offensive line. Uh, neither of those guys. Chig is a smaller tight end. He's a move tight end. Uh, he's six foot two, 230, you know, with great speed. He ran a 439 at the combine. So he's more of like your secondary tight end that can go across the line of scrimmage and go back and forth and move in motion. And you get him yards after catch opportunities. I still think that they could add another tight end later in the draft. I think a guy like a Tip Raymond. Um, or a span forward. They're more blocking tight ends, yeah. big, physical, strong guys. Wiley is tall, but he's slender. Uh, Oconquo is smaller and speedier. So I think adding a, a big, physical tight end, uh, I think that would be smart. And I think they could look to do that later in the draft. Okay. But I don't think that it's a... Some people have tight end as a huge need for the Titans. And if you go back and look at Brian Callahan's offenses and what he's been involved with, there's never been some elite tight end that takes a ton of production. So I just don't think it's as important as maybe people on the outside yeah. think that it is. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Bengal fans, uh, you know, I, I, cause we were going over the mock draft the other day and uh, Brock Bowers was available and it was like, yeah, mm -hmm. but it, they just don't, they don't really need it. Right. They don't, they don't go that route they as much as Bengal much. fans would probably go, come on, go, we got to get a good tight end now. <laughs> no, nope, it's just, it's probably not going to happen. Okay. Um, Let's talk about the – well, first of all, the quarterback room is set now. Um, yeah. I don't know how you felt at the time, just so you know. And I don't – because I, I'm just going to bring it up because I want to know if he's going to be around. But I just never bought into Malik Willis. Just never did. I just thought yeah. uh, he was just – if they were looking – it was – if everybody was trying to find, like, the next. And it, I just never saw it. And I just thought that this was a disastrous pick. And, and, and nothing has uh, proven me wrong there. So do you think he's going to be around this year? No, I think he ultimately does get cut. And I think they may even bring in another quarterback to be their third quarterback. I, I had high hopes for Malik Willis. I was excited when the pick happened. Not because I thought Malik Willis was some great prospect, but because sure. the Titans were really in a low-risk situation. They added a couple third-round picks after the A.J. Brown trade and then a trade with the Jets. So taking Malik Willis in the 90s and seeing if you could get something out of him I didn't. It was a low risk, high reward move for the Titans. But you're 100 percent right. Malik Willis has not worked out. I do not believe he's an NFL player, and I don't think he fits with what the new coaching staff is looking for anyway. So I, I ultimately don't think that he's on the roster by the time that we get to September. 
All right. And then Pollard was a big addition, of course, to the running back room. But uh, I know the season hasn't started yet. How weird is it going to be to not have Derrick Henry back there? And that kind of offense, too, that power game with Henry. Yep. How does that uh, how does it feel now? It is strange. You know, Derrick Henry's been the identity of the team. And one thing I can say that Titans fans all over will identify with is the Titans aren't a well-respected team nationally. They don't get a lot of conversation. When they do, a lot of it is about the other side. You know, what the other team that played the <laughs> Titans, the Titans beat the Chiefs. Oh, the conversation is, are the Chiefs messed up? Not, yeah. uh, congrats to the Titans. So sure. that's just a, a reality. And Derrick Henry helped the Titans have a face and get respect in the national media. And while that stuff doesn't matter to wins and losses, as a fan, it's an entertainment industry. You want to see your team talked about, and you want to see your team talked about well. Um, I don't think that it's wrong to say that. So it is strange, but ultimately, Derrick Henry is a one-trick pony. Now, that one trick is oh, yeah. incredibly elite, but yeah. he does give you a lack of, of, or he does make you more predictable as an sure. offense when he's in the backfield. And I think having Tony Pollard and Tajay Spears, who are very similar players in style, and they actually communicated with each other before they ever knew that they were going to be on the same team. They have very similar skill sets. And the coaching staff talked about this recently as well. The running back in the backfield isn't going to tell you anything about the play that they're about to run. And having that lack of predictability, I think, will help make the offense more explosive. The loaded boxes were very helpful when you were running that play-action glance sure. to A.J. Brown over the middle, but they don't have A.J. Brown anymore. The offense needs to be a little bit different, and uh, I think moving away from Henry, while tough for the fan base to swallow, was the right move to evolve this offense to be more modern. You think this could be a 50-50 backfield? Yeah, I, I honestly think that Tajay Spears will get the more work out of the two because uh, both guys are good as pass protectors. Both guys can catch the ball out of the backfield. Again, very similar skill sets. Tajay Spears is just a jitterbug, man. He's just so good. He's he's underrated at this point. And yep. I think Tajay Spears could even be 60-40 in terms of the work. But both of them will definitely split the carries, and it'll make it difficult on fantasy football players. All right. And by the way, Haskins, I know. So what's 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 going on there? Because I'm a Michigan fan. I re mm. obviously he had that big oh, no. year. Yeah. What's that? I'm a buck. I'm a Buckeye. I'm from oh, Ohio. I'm a big right. Ohio State that's guy, right. like I was saying earlier. That's so right. Yeah. We'll continue yeah. though. I'll let it slide, Greg. <laughs> I'll let it slide. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it goes in waves. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So Haskins had the big year, and uh, I thought, yeah, hey, you know what? M m he may not be a bad pro. I, I don't expect greatness but i mean but i know it hasn't worked out for him so far what, what's been the problem and now there's a new staff so mm -hmm. uh is there still hope that he could catch on here as maybe their physical back well as for what's happened so uh last year he had some legal troubles that have since been uh moved away from it's it's not something that's going to continue i, I believe the charges were dropped and all that I'm, i i always say i'm not a lawyer all right i talk about football i'm not so i don't want to speak out of turn but i'm pretty sure the legal troubles were were dropped he did get injured though and with the legal troubles and then the injury in the preseason they just put him on ir and said your season's over blah, blah, blah. he's back in the building now he was at you know the facility this week working my thing is, I don't think Hassan Haskins is a running back. He is a special teams only player. Now, he was second on the Titans in special teams tackles his rookie year with 13. So he is a very good special teams player. He just doesn't have the juice. He just doesn't yeah. have wiggle and agility. No. He's not going to make guys miss. And he doesn't really have long-term speed. So he doesn't really give you much as a running back. But I think as like a fourth running back on the depth chart who is primarily a special teams player, I know that most fans are like, you're either an all pro or you're a bum. And yeah. There's no need for anything in between. I think a guy like Hassan Haskins could add value to the roster as he is willing to pass protect. He is a physical guy. So I think it's like a fourth running back on the depth chart who is primarily a special teams dynamo. I think okay. he could still find a way to carve out a role and stick on the roster. But it will be an uphill battle, especially if the Titans add another running back late in the draft or an undrafted free agency um, who is, you know, more in line with what the new coaching staff wants. But I really love Tassan Haskins on, on special teams his rookie year. So I think he could still, you know, carve out a career based on that. All right. Let's flip on over to the defensive side. So the Ooh. new defensive Ooh. coordinator, Denard Wilson, we don't have a whole lot. I mean, we do have a whole lot to go on, but we're not sure exactly right. what he's right. going to do because of all of the conflicting schemes that he's been a part mm -hmm. of. Even mm -hmm. though what we do know is, is he wants to be aggressive and that's yes. fans love to hear that. 
is when their <laughs> right. defensive coach says, I want to be aggressive. Um, so talk about what you think you might see out of this defensive scheme and how that will impact their uh, draft selections. Well, I think what we can go off of is what Denard Wilson has said since taking over the job. And he mentioned his influences as Greg Williams, the uh, cantankerous defensive coordinator who was a part of Bounty Gate. But, yeah. Right, but is absolutely known for bringing the house all the time. He also mentioned Todd Bowles, who's the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who is also known for his blitz scheme. So I And the Titans brought in Kenneth Murray, who has struggled early in his career, but is a very good blitzer at the linebacker position. That is one of the one things he does do very well. So I think the Titans are going to run a scheme where you got a bunch of guys crowding the line of scrimmage, you're really bluffing the blitzes, you're dropping a defensive end while bringing your linebacker, you're bringing a slot corner while dropping an outside linebacker. Uh, I think they want versatile guys who can all bring pressure on the quarterback. So I think uh, with what Wilson has said, his influences are, and then the move that they made to bring in Kenneth Murray, I think that we can ascertain here that the Titans are going to be a heavy blitz, uh, you know, show on the line of scrimmage type of team. They're going to bring it to the offense. And I will also say that Brian Callahan said he wants a defensive coordinator that's difficult to plan against for himself. So a guy like Denard Wilson, who you never know where the pressure is coming from, whether it's yep. coming, whether it's not. I think we're going to see a, a heavy blitz, a heavy crowd the line of scrimmage type defense that's aggressive and is trying to attack the offense. Yeah, and of course, like you said, what you need to make sure of is if you're going to have that much pressure on the quarterback, then you better have some corners who can play press and can go one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. And they made the big trade for Snead, which was mm -hmm. just one of the best trades this offseason. They get a woozy. They have McCreary. So they seem to be in pretty good shape with their top three corners. Yeah, I think they have one of the better top three corner groups in the league. A lot of people maybe don't know about Roger McCreary. He's one of the best slot corners in the NFL. One of four players last year that didn't allow a touchdown all year. Sneed wow. was one of them as well. Roger McCreary <laughs> is the other. And uh, McCreary has been in a tough spot because of the injuries in the defensive backfield and the lack of depth in the defensive backfield for the Titans in recent years. He's been asked to play outside, and with his arm length concerns and his size concerns, he's 5'11", really short arms. He's just not meant to play on the outside in the NFL, and he's taken some beatings at times when he's been put out there due to injury. But if you can keep him in the slot and you can keep him you know, with better matchups, he's been absolutely fantastic. And a guy who's willing to get in your face, play physical, play man defense, not scared of any matchup. I think all three of the Titans cornerbacks, Sneed, Awuzie, McCreary, I think all of them have that style. And I, I think it's because when you're going to bring pressure, you have to disrupt timing. And another way to disrupt that timing is to press guys at the line of scrimmage and make their routes take longer to develop. That gives that split second extra for that blitz to get home. So I think it's all going to work together. But very important additions for the Titans with Awuzie and Sneed at cornerback to allow them to play they, the, play the way they want to play. All right, and then uh, taking a look, though, at the rest of the corner Ooh. situation, uh, and that's where you would think that the team is going to add some depth. Farley, mm -hmm. of course, is the one that sticks out, but is he pretty much like at a point where, uh, you know, talk about like lives, you know, cats and nine yeah. lives and all that. I mean, I think he's probably on his ninth life, uh, yeah. even though he's only been around a few years. But, um, hey, it's a new staff, so yeah. is he healthy? I mean, right now, he is healthy. He's been participating. He's in the building. He's working. Farley is a guy who, out of my five, six years of covering this football team for a living, I feel so bad for him. His mother yeah. died of cancer when he was in college. He had ACL injury, back injury in college, gets to the NFL, tears his ACL in six games, comes back his second year, back injury. His house explodes in a natural gas situation. Jeez. His dad dies in the explosion. Like, he's lost both his parents in tragic ways. His football career is completely off the rails as his body completely betrays him. Like, I, I don't, like, personally, from a person level, I feel so bad for Caleb Farley. But the reality is he, he just hasn't proved to add any value to the roster with a new coaching staff coming in, if he doesn't stay healthy and show some, even when he's been healthy, he hasn't played well. He was a guy who was a converted wide receiver in college, so he needed a ton of experience coming in. It was a big bet by John Robinson that did not pay off. Um, maybe with better tutelage and better coaching and some health, he could turn into a serviceable player, but I think any idea that he's going to be the player they hoped he would be as a first-round pick, I think that's out the window. And I think at the end of the day, 
he he probably doesn't make the roster long term. I I think that they bring in another corner in the draft. And unfortunately, and as bad as I feel, it, it is a business. It's a cold business. And I think Caleb Farley, like a guy like Malik Willis or like a guy like Traylon Burks, who I said, I just don't think that they're people that you can count on right now for anything. Anything that you get from them is a cherry on top or a bonus. I don't think you can count on it. All right, at safety, um, tell me where they are right now. Because, again, they they've, they've, yeah. they've had three part-time guys that are no longer there, Bayard, mm-hmm. Wallace, and Edmonds. So you've got Molden and Hooker. Uh, I'm assuming Hooker's fine. But yeah. Molden, are they good with Molden as well? Or is that a, an area they need to add competition? I think ultimately Molden is a third safety. He's like a dime package safety where he plays close to the line. He doesn't have the deep speed to play back deep. He doesn't have the quickness to cover man coverage. I think you want him as your dime linebacker in third down situations, passing situations. He can man on tight ends, man on running backs out of the backfield, spy a quarterback, play a deep hook zone, you know, stuff like that. But I just don't think that Elijah Molden is, you know, a deep coverage safety. I think he's your third safety, not a starter. I think they really need to go to veteran free agency. I think there are a ton of good safety still out there. Marcus May, Justin Simmons, uh, Jamal Adams even, who I think would be a, a huge Huge risk. I don't want them to do that, but you know, in this in the defense that Denard Wilson is probably going to run with aggression, oh, Jamal yeah. Adams might be a good fit in that. You that's, know, that's, that's what a he good does point. well. So, yeah. I think the Titans need to add a veteran in free agency after the draft to be their starting safety next to Amani Hooker and put Elijah Molden back in that third safety role, that okay. dime safety role. But Amani Hooker is an underrated player, in my opinion. He's a ball hawk. I call him a ball hawk guy because he came from Iowa. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I like Amani Hooker a lot. Uh, he may not be in the long-term plans for the Titans because his deal could, you know, they could get out of his deal after the year. But this season, I think Amani Hooker is definitely a starter in in Sharpie. Uh, but I think they could add, I think they should add a safety late in the draft. But I also think they need to add a veteran after yep. the draft in free agency to be their starter. Wow. I mean, that that idea about Jamal Adams just uh, makes almost too much sense uh, with the style, like you just mentioned. Um, but of course, he has, his problem is also staying healthy. So, all right. Uh, let's talk about inside linebackers. So you mentioned Murray. Uh, Gibbons. Now, Gibbons statistically seems like he actually is a pretty decent player. <laughs> right, uh, right. But uh, is he... Is he more than that? Is he somebody that they can rely on? And do you see, though, that at some point they're going to want to add another backer to that room, to that to that yeah. position? I think they are. And I honestly think the guy behind Jack Gibbons on the depth chart, Otis Reese, is a guy to keep your eye on. So as I've been talking about, th- this defense is going to be aggressive. They're looking for people who can fly around, get downhill. And Jack Gibbons is a smart player. He lines everybody up in the right spot. He knows where to be. He understands his assignment. He is technically sound. He was an undrafted free agent, though, because he's just not an athlete. Quickness, speed, he just doesn't have it. And I think a guy, Otis Reese, is six foot three, a former safety with great speed and athleticism. I think he's a guy who could ultimately replace the Kenneth Murray role long-term. So Otis Reese is a guy to keep your eye on, but I think this is a place where the Titans add somebody in the draft, maybe higher than I want them to. Just my football philosophy, I look at inside linebacker like running back on offense. You can get production out of that position late, and you look at Rand Carthon's history in San Francisco, he added Dre Greenlaw. He added Pete Warner. Those are late-round draft picks who turned into very good linebackers. So I think you can find very good linebackers on day three of the NFL draft. And I would want the Titans to attack there to add somebody. Would that guy be a starter right away? I don't know. But Jack Gibbons is a solid player without the athleticism you need. Otis Reese is a freak athlete who maybe needs some more, you know, development in terms of what Gibbons is good at. If you could put them in the same player, they would be an excellent linebacker. But I think linebacker is somewhere where the Titans add somebody late in the draft because I don't think they have two starting caliber. Uh, Honestly, I don't think they have any starting caliber linebackers right now. I'm not very high on Kenneth Murray. Maybe in the Titans system, if they get him, just go downhill, man. Yeah. You're just a dog, go hunt, yep. which is what they've talked about. Then Kenneth Murray could have some value, but that's definitely the probably the worst position on the defense right now, in my opinion, maybe outside of like defensive end. Okay. Uh, and, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about next is edge rushers. So uh, you mentioned this on the other video, that this is one of their top needs. Uh, yes, mm-hmm. they've got Landry, even though Landry has never like turned out to be some superstar edge rusher, but he is what right. he is. 
and Arden Key is a nice, uh, probably pass rusher only type guy that you want on your yeah. team. You don't want him to do much mm -hmm. more than that. I think you would agree with that. And that's the reason mm -hmm. why you don't really see a whole lot more than that, that this becomes the need that you talk about. You talked about. It's also a long, uh, you know, you got to think when you're drafting, you can't just think, Oh, what's the depth chart look like this year? We got to fill it. Yep. You know, like that, you got to think long-term and Harold Landry, you know, may not be around after next year. And Harold Landry is getting older as well as a draft pick in 2018. He's no spring chicken. Landry is like your consummate, you know, 10 sack guy. He's going to yeah. get 10 to 12 sacks, maybe 13 if he stays healthy all year. He's not Miles Garrett, TJ Watt, guys in that realm. He's he's a couple, couple tiers below the Brian Burns and, you know, uh, guy who just got uh, paid big time for uh, Josh Allen for the Jaguars. He's a step below those guys, he's just a he can drop in coverage as well. He can play four three outside linebacker, good against the run. He's just a very solid guy who could give you double digit sacks. But the Titans need a top tier pass rusher, and and maybe they're not going to get that in this draft if they go in the second round, which is where I want them to go for an extra edge rusher. But they could get a solid player who can be a starter, and you pair him with Harold Landry for the next two years. I think you have a good edge rush group. Arden Key slides back to that third edge rusher role who could bring that energy off the bench. I think they're okay at edge if they add somebody early in the draft, but definitely a big need long-term, and they have short-term desires for that as well. So that's why I put it as such a big need for the Titans in our previous video. All right, and then uh, wrapping up with the defensive line on defense, of course, Jeffrey Simmons is uh, the beast up there. They added yes. Joseph Day, but it doesn't look like there's a whole lot more than that. So no. uh, is there somebody there that I'm missing or uh, is this definitely <laughs> a spot that they need to add some more uh, depth in the draft? Definitely need to. Quite honestly, I made jokes all year last year. Quentin Bohanna, uh, Keandre Coburn, like are these made up Madden players? <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, all jokes aside, no disrespect to those guys. I'm sure they wouldn't like hearing that. But at the end of the day, uh, none of those players you see, even TK McClendon Jr., what are we, you know, what are we doing here? Like, that cannot be a starter. He may not even be a rosterable player. Yeah. Like, he's a practice squad level guy. So, the Titans definitely need to add. I think replacing Danico Autry is huge. Sebastian Joseph Day can play nose tackle. He can slide out and play some three technique, play some five technique up and down the line of scrimmage. Jeffrey Simmons is a three technique that could also play. He has the athleticism to play maybe some defensive end in a four-man front for sure. But I think ultimately they need someone to replace Danico Autry, who can be that defensive end in a 3-4, who can play defensive end in a four-man front, who can kick inside and rush the passer from an inside alignment when we get into passing downs. I think they really need a chess piece on the defensive line right now, and they need depth as well. I think you can find nose tackle depth at, in undrafted free agency. Yeah. Uh, like I mentioned with linebacker, I think late in the draft, even again, undrafted free agency, you can find guys there who can be nose tackles, but that defensive end spot guy that can play, you know, on the inside shoulder of the offensive tackle outside shoulder of the offensive tackle. I think adding that spot right there in the draft along, like I say edge rusher, but if the Titans added that position in the second round or third round of the draft, I, I think that would still be smart. And I would be on board with that as well. Yeah, and this is another reason why trading down would make a lot of sense uh, without mm -hmm. that third-round pick because they the, the, going over this depth chart here, I mean, you got defensive line, you got edge, you, you can add a free safety, maybe a veteran. You've got the inside linebacker uh, uh, position. You've got tackles. You've got a wide receiver. <laughs> That's a lot. Now, and, on and on and on. Yeah, yeah, this is one of the worst rosters in the NFL at the end of the day. Like, they have some good pieces, of course, and they've added some good players in free agency. The Titans didn't have any draft picks to pay. That's why you don't pay free agents because you don't want to lose your homegrown talent. There is no homegrown talent here. They missed yeah. on all their draft picks for three years. Yeah. That's why the GM got fired, you know? So they they have the ability to pay free agents, but now they really, the key to the NFL is drafting and developing. That's how you sustain success long-term. So they got to start that process now and hope that they can add some depth. And that's why I keep saying a trade down in the second round, you get your offensive tackle with your first pick. You trade down in the second round. You add a defensive lineman or edge rusher. Then you add a wide receiver. And then you can add some of these depth pieces at other positions later in the draft. That would be an ideal outcome for the Titans here. Uh, special teams, uh, 
as we wrap up here, uh, how was it last year? Not so good? Uh, good. Uh, Morgan Cox is one of the best long snappers probably of all time. Uh, he was an all-pro with the Baltimore Ravens. He's been with the Titans. This will be his third season now. You never hear his name, and that's a good thing for a long snapper. They did bring back Nick Folk. Now, Nick Folk is 40 years old, but he was incredibly reliable last year. Um, and maybe they bring in a young kicker and undrafted free agency to compete, but I'm cool with Nick Folk. Punter is really the big question. Now, Ryan Stonehouse is in my opinion, one of the top three punters in the entire NFL. But he tore his ACL, tore his MCL, and like broke a bone in his leg last year on a punt block. And who knows if he's, one, going to recover by the time the season's ready, or two, is ever going to be the same again. So I hope that Ryan Stonehouse comes back and, and is just at the same level with a huge leg, one of the best punters in the league. But if not, punter could quickly become a little bit of a concern for the Titans, depending on the health status of Stonehouse. But overall, I think the Titans are in a good place with spe special teams. And also, uh, kick returners, they've, they've got them on uh, on the roster right now? Or well, they it's, it's interesting off? because with the new kick return rules, how will that change what teams look for with kick returners? What, what yep. will that change? I think with Tajay Spears, I think that, you could even use a guy like Julius Chestnut, who is one of their backup running backs. Uh, I think those guys could make a lot of sense as returners. But I do I do think uh, the Titans do not have a punt returner right now. And I do think that, you know, looking later in the draft, looking for guys who also add some return value, I think that's critical for the Titans as well. They do not have a great situation when it comes to kick returners or punt returners. Well, this was very educational, Tyler. I really appreciate it. Seriously, great job. And uh, I wish we had uh, had an opportunity to speak a little uh, earlier. I would have been a little bit more informed on some of those mock drafts that we did, but that's okay. Overall, we all knew we still we still believe that they're going to have to pick an offensive tackle with that first pick. Mm -hmm. So that's the major thing. And I certainly hope that uh, you guys get uh, exactly who you're looking for. But it seems like a very exciting time right now to be a Titans fan. There's a lot of I'm sure there's a lot of new energy. Uh, and uh, especially if the quarterback situation works out. Uh, you have a show that you do. We mentioned that, Locked On Titans podcast. How often do you do it? And we'll, again, we're going to leave a link in the description so people can check that out. Uh, Locked On Titans is a daily podcast. I post uh, Sunday night through Thursday night on YouTube, Monday to Friday on podcast platforms, any podcast platform. Uh, it's the only daily podcast. Tennessee Titans podcast and the number one ranked Titans podcast in the entire world. Uh, I am proud to say as well. So locked on Titans podcast. Honestly, I'm in the midst of with the draft coming up. I, once Sunday hits this week, I'll record like 13 or 14 shows in a row every single day. So uh, there's there's nobody out there producing as much content for the Titans as I do on a podcast platform. So uh, yeah, check that out if you just want something. It's just fun to listen about your team every single day. I try to keep it 35, 30 minutes so it's not something that you got to, you know, stay on for a few hours like some of these bigger podcasts. Um, it's doing really well. Really proud of what, what I got going on over there. So hopefully people will check that out. Excellent. Tyler, appreciate it. I also want to remind everybody you can check out the R Lads draft guide. It's available right now. And you want to check that out. We'll have a link in the description uh, where you can uh, order that as well. So, Tyler, I appreciate it. I look forward to talking to you again on the other side of the draft. Yep. Thanks so much, Greg. Can't wait.